This evening, the International Court of Justice is set to reveal its ruling on Ghana's request for provisional measures against one as well as controversial referendum. We'll have the latest on Ghana's efforts to protect its territorial integrity and the outcome of this crucial decision. In other news, the government is in advanced discussions with Suriname about the construction of the current King River Bridge connecting the two nations. Find out how this infrastructure project could transform transportation, trade and tourism while strengthening regional ties. A disturbing incident in Georgetown involving a jealous pensioner and a Venezuelan woman. We'll provide details on the shopping stabbing and the victim's critical condition. Internationally, Mali's military government strikes a deal with Russia to build a gold refinery in Bamako. We'll cover in the implications of this agreement as Mali army regains control of northern territory. At the NATO summit in Brussels, the war in Gaza takes the spotlight. We'll delve into the discussion surrounding NATO's stance on conflict, including Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the situation in Gaza. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for November 29, 2023. I am Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, the International Court of Justice is set to announce its ruling on Ghana's request for provisional measures against Venezuela's controversial referendum on Friday, December 1, 2023. Ghana seeks to prevent Venezuela from taking actions that threaten its territorial integrity, particularly concerning the Esequibo region. The request aims to uphold the validity of the 1899 arbitral award, establishing the land boundary between the two countries. Venezuela's planned referendum, featuring questions challenging the ICJ's jurisdiction and proposing the annexation of Ghana's Esequibo region, prompted Ghana's urgent appeal to the ICJ to refrain from such actions violating international law principles. Judge Joan E. Donahue will announce the court's decision at the Peace Palace in The Hague publicly at 3 p.m. or 10 a.m. local time. Also making the headlines, Ghana is currently at an advanced stage of discussion with its Surinamese counterparts in relation to the building of the Quarantine River Bridge, which will link Ghana and Suriname. Senior Finance Minister Dr. Ashni Singh announced this during an event in the region over the weekend. Reminding of the numerous infrastructural development taking place nationwide, which continues to transform the country's architectural landscape, the minister informed residents of the developments on the way in Region 6 and the exciting opportunities they are slated to create. He noted that the bids are currently under evaluation by Ghana and Suriname. Meanwhile, highlighting the importance of the bridge, the minister said the project will not only open new transportation avenues, but also build on the bilateral and trading relationships between Ghana and Suriname and extend market access for both nations. This bridge is also expected to spiral Ghana's tourism sector as new interconnected roads will be built to provide easier access to the country. The project holds immense potential for fostering economic growth, strengthening regional integration, and improving transportation links between the two neighboring nations. When completed, the bridge will span the Quarantine River from South Durain in Suriname to Molson Creek in Guyana and is slated to have a lifespan of 100 years. In other news, a 41-year-old Venezuelan woman, Maria Pinango, is in critical condition after being stabbed multiple times by a jealous 70-year-old pensioner, Raymond Daniels, on Friday, November 24th. The attack occurred outside the Demico house in Georgetown as Daniels, frustrated by Pinango's refusal to leave her boyfriend for him, stabbed her with her own knife. Pinango, who carries the knife for protection, was warned by a friend about Daniels before the attack. The woman, who resides at Suicide, was attacked after opening her bag to reach for something. Witnesses reported that Daniels, appearing intoxicated, threatened and stabbed Pinango multiple times. She underwent emergency surgery, but is not showing signs of recovery, suffering from internal bleeding. The motive behind the attack was Daniels' desire for marriage, despite Pinango's rejection. Stick around when we return. Lyndon Muir and Tong Kong Su expressed concerns over unilateral Tong Clark appointment and tragic loss. 11 year old Strath Bay Primary School student dies after a school incident. Giving you the best Christmas with Digital. Did you 
Excel is bringing you the best deals, the best prices, and the best cash prices. Hold on to your Santa hats because there's up to $50 million in cash to be won. Activate any data plan and you can be one of 14 winners to join Digicel's Spin to Win Game Show, where you can win millions in cash. Activate a data plan today on the best network and make this Christmas the best one yet. Digicel! It's Christmas at Kisoon's Furniture Store. We are fully stocked for the holidays with a wide variety of furniture to choose from store-wide. Beautiful sofas, dinette sets, rugs, pillows, foam and hybrid cooling mattresses in all sizes. Beds in king, queen and single sizes and so much more. Come on down to our mega store or our Rob Street location. Merry Christmas from Kisoon's Furniture Store. Good girl forget things. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. Let Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Hello, my fellow TikToker followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, kasrip, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, hot spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you know, know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document plastic flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Ready go to the supermarket, and she probably buy up nothing of things. She feel she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Welcome back. Minister of Public Service Sonia Peran strongly condemns Venezuela's unfounded territorial claims during a public awareness conference on the Guyana Venezuela border controversy on Tuesday. Parag, representing President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, emphasized the potential threat posed by such claims to international law, regional stability, and democracy. Despite the conclusive resolution of the border dispute in 1899, Venezuela persists in claiming Guyana's execrable region. Parag underscored Guyana's commitment to peaceful and legally binding resolutions, emphasizing the country's desire to set an example for the world. The conference, organized by the National Security and Intelligence Studies students of the University of Southern Caribbean, aimed to raise awareness among students and stakeholders about the historical significance of the controversy. Various public and private sector activities further reinforce Ghana's stance on the matter. In a heartbreaking incident, 11-year-old Mark Harry Paul of Strats Bay Primary School on the east coast of Demerara lost his life on Monday following what was initially described as a playful encounter. The incident occurred around 3 p.m. in the school's compound and involved a 14-year-old student from a neighboring secondary school. Mark's father, Roy Harry Paul, revealed that the incident unfolded when a rag was snatched from Mark by the older student, leading to a confrontation where Mark's head was slammed into a school gate, leaving a one-inch scar. Mark was sent home after the incident, complaining of a headache. The family, unaware of the severity of the head injury, gave him Panadol and he retired to bed. Later that evening, Mark's condition deteriorated, 
and he was rushed to the Georgetown Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The post-mortem examination conducted on Wednesday revealed that Mark died from a fractured skull. The Ministry of Education is investigating the incident. Roy Harry Paul is seeking justice for his son, emphasizing the need for transparency and accountability in the investigation. The grieving father, expressing the immense pain of losing his child, called for the awareness of the profound emotions experienced by the family. The tragic incident has sparked deep sorrow within the community, prompting a crucial examination of school safety and supervision. In other news, the Mayan Town Council of Linden has raised concerns over the local government commission's actions, particularly related to the appointment of a town clerk. Former municipal councillor, communications specialist and entrepreneur Lennox Gasper was appointed as town clerk. His appointment came after the resignation of former town clerk Arlene Overmuller. The council condemns the commission's imposition of a town clerk without proper procedure and asserts that the decision undermines the council's authority and autonomy. The Mayan Town Council of Linden emphasized the importance of respecting democratic processes for such appointments and called for collaborative and consultative decision-making involving the council. The council urges the commission to reconsider its unilateral actions and encourage a meaningful dialogue for a transparent and accountable approach to local governance. The mayor and council stated that it remains committed to serving the community with integrity and diligence, advocating for fair and inclusive process in administrative appointments. Don't go away after the break. West Darfur violence, HRW reports mass ethnic killing in West Darfur, and NATO chief, Ukraine, Gaza are very different wars. Giving you the best. This Christmas, it's all about the best. Digicel is bringing you the best deals, the best prices, and the best cash prizes. Get half off and a whopping 50 gigs of data when you purchase the Samsung A04 for just $14,000, the Samsung A14 for just $29,000, or the Samsung A24 for just $35,000. That's right, half off and 50 gigs of data. It doesn't get any better than this. So why wait? This Christmas, buy nothing but the best. Offer good while stocks last. Digicel! Sneak away with the gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Call it small to make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern optical services. 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226 1082. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. When you need money and you gotta get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. It's Christmas at Kisoon's Furniture Store. We are fully stocked for the holidays with a wide variety of furniture to choose from store-wide. Beautiful sofas, dinette sets, rugs, pillows, foam and hybrid cooling mattresses in all sizes. Beds in king, queen and single sizes and so much more. Come on down to our mega store or our Rob Street location. Merry Christmas from Kisoon's Furniture Store. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Mali's military government has reached a deal with Russia 
Tabele Gold Refinery in the capital, Bamako. It comes as the army says it's regaining control of more territories in the north, which had been in the hands of armed groups. Al Jazeera's Nicholas Haig reports. A gold rush in Mali's northern region, led by armed groups. Al-Qaeda, ISIL fighters and Tuareg rebels control artisanal mines. Al Jazeera witnessed African migrants on their way to Europe, but forced by traffickers to dig for gold. Many are children working in the desert under extremely hot conditions. They search for the precious metal. A small nugget that will be sold on the international market, from the desert of Mali to the jewelry shops in Europe, the Middle East and Asia. We've been here for a year. My brother has been here for almost six months. We are provided with safety and security as long as we do the work. The UN Office on Drugs and Crimes has put out this map showing all the gold mining sites in the Sahel. Most are under the control of armed groups. In 2021, $13 billion worth of gold was produced from these sites. Non-state armed groups, they want to replace in the long term the state. So they stay there. And that when you want to replace the state, what do you do? You have to fund your operations with a lot of things. Ransom, uh, trafficking in persons and gold trafficking. The report states that UN planes from Mali's peacekeeping mission known as MINUSMA were used to smuggle gold from the northern city of Kidal to the capital Bamako. We reached out to MINUSMA, but they have declined to comment on the report. Mali's junta have asked the UN peacekeeping force to leave the country, including from the northern bases. Stepping in are Malian forces and Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group. Last week, the country's junta signed an agreement with Russia to build the biggest gold refinery in West Africa. I think Mali is now realizing that they were losing 95% of their potential revenue. Uh, is trying to uh, you know, take control of the, of the territory, which means that that will have a, a bubble uh, effect in the displacement of those, these non-state actors. Rights group describe gold in Mali as a blood mineral fueling conflict. The northern frontier is set to become a fierce battleground for a precious metal to the world that Malians are dying for. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera. A new report by Human Rights Watch says hundreds of civilians from the West Darfur region of Sudan were killed by paramilitary rapid support forces and their allied militias. The rights group says the attack may constitute war crimes, Al Jazeera's Habib Morgan reports. Verbal and physical abuse and a call for their killing. Shoot them, a man says. These videos surfaced from Ardamata in Sudan's West Darfur after the paramilitary rapid support forces took over the army base in early November. Following the takeover, rights groups say at least 800 people were killed, most from the ethnic Masalit group. It's believed those in these videos are among them. Days after the takeover, images of what looked like dead bodies on the streets in Ardamata were seen via satellite. Thousands of people fled during the violence, arriving to Adre in neighboring Chad. If they find a black person, they call him a fighter and kill him. If a black person is just walking, they kill him. They are people who hid inside the houses in fear, so they broke in with weapons and killed everyone. Many other refugees say they witnessed similar atrocities and accused the rapid support forces, which has been fighting the army for power since mid-April, and their allied militias of being behind them. They're focusing on killing men, even if it's a child or a young boy. This is what's happening in Ardamata. As for the girls, they rape some and leave some, but they mainly kill the men in mass killings. Most of those killed were in displacement camps around the base, sheltering from a previous wave of attacks in June and July, which also predominantly targeted the Masalit. Those attacks resulted in over a dozen mass graves, according to rights groups and the UN. Human Rights Watch called the new wave of killings war crimes and called for steps to hold those behind it accountable. 
this U.S. Security Council have a lot to do from targeted sanctions against key perpetrators, visiting the refugees in Eastern Chad, but also thinking creatively about how best they can protect civilians and deter further atrocities. But while the world is yet to act, those who can continue to flee and arrive at camps, <laughs> unsure whether there will be justice against those who violently forced them from their homes. Hiba Morgan, Al Jazeera. The war in Gaza has been high on the agenda at a NATO summit in Brussels. The alliance's chief, Jens Saltenberg, has denied NATO is applying double standards when it comes to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and Israel's bombardment of Gaza. Al Jazeera's Stefan reports. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg drumming up support for Ukraine at a time when much of the world's attention has moved to the Middle East and the war on Gaza. The messages from NATO is that uh, it is important that uh, this uh, conflict uh, does not escalate to a bigger regional conflict. And the message to Iran is that they should not uh, use or to, uh, to, to seize uh, uh, the instability, the conflict we now see, to, uh, to further escalate. And they have to rein in their proxies, uh, Hamas and, uh, and Hezbollah. So we have the crisis in Gaza that we uh, are all working to contend with. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken held closed-door meetings with Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan and others to discuss the war on Gaza and the future of the Strip, ahead of his third visit to Israel at the end of this week. When asked if the West is not using different standards when reacting to Russia's invasion in Ukraine compared to Israel's bombardments on Gaza, Stoltenberg replied that humanitarian law applies to all conflicts, but he also said that Gaza can't be compared to Ukraine because Ukraine never posed a threat to Russia, an answer that may not satisfy those who want a much firmer stance against Israel's actions. NATO member states are deeply divided on Israel's response in Gaza, with Belgium and Spain calling the number of civilian casualties unbearable and unacceptable. And Germany still firmly behind Israel's actions. The visions that explain the muted response from NATO. Step fast on Al Jazeera, Brussels. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D weather forecast. That's it to be two headline news for this Wednesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow morning at 6 30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.